second for people to um, start joining. Let's see. Okay. Good evening, everybody. Um, looks like some people are still joining, um, but the time is now 7.05 and we have a quorum of committee members in attendance. So we're going to call this public hearing to order. Um, welcome everybody to the February 29th, 2024 public hearing of the Amherst Community Development Block Grant Advisory Committee. Pursuant to Chapter 20 of the Acts of 2021 and extended by the state legislature on July 16th of 2022, this meeting is being conducted virtually using the Zoom platform. The meeting is being recorded and minutes are being taken as usual. We will just do a quick um, roll call to make sure that everybody's camera is working. Um, Suzanne? Yeah. Great. Rika? Present. Excellent. And Nat? Yes, I'm here. Terrific. Um, so um, this evening, um, as I said, this is a, a public hearing. So we're going to begin the, the meeting as a, we'll begin the session as a public hearing. Um, hear from, um, from people in the audience. We're going to limit comments to two minutes. Um, and then when um, everybody has spoken, we will then um, move into the public meeting portion of the evening. Um, the way that we have been doing this and, and um, Nate just confirmed for me if it's different, but um, is inviting people to join us um, in the as a panelist so that we can see you and we can all see each other while you speak. And then um, after your two minutes, you'll be moved back into the um, attendee session where, where you'll be um, watching it and viewing it as a webinar. Sure. So works. if people want to raise their hands, if they're interested in speaking, um, we can go ahead and do that. And, and I will just let everybody know the purpose of this meeting um, for, for our purposes is to review again, the decisions that we made um, in our last meeting, which are posted on the website um, and um, confirm still amongst us that, that those are still the decisions that we want to make to the town manager. And so um, we're interested in hearing from people on that. Um, and um, with that, we can get started. Sure. Uh, Kathy, I'll, you'll be asked to be um, promoted to panelist. I, I, I seem to have joined you. Terrific. Hi, Kathy. <laughs> Thanks for joining. So if you can just introduce yourself and um, then we will happily hear what you have to say. Sure. And, you know, it's, there is you probably know this, but when you promote someone to panelists, I wasn't aware of this. Um, I go into a dark sphere for a few seconds while a little thing goes around <laughs> saying <laughs> being, being promoted. So my name is Kathy Shane. I live in North Amherst, um, actually Montague Road north of the area that you're discussing on the multi-use uh, path project. And that's the project I wish, wish to speak to. I am also a town councilor for the district, but I am talking tonight in my behalf as a local resident and also a taxpayer. So since you're limited to two minutes, um, I will go briefly over the four reasons I would speak against awarding this grant. Um, the first is that I think it should be a fairly low priority if we look around town for sidewalks and what needs to be done. And I sent, but I sent them late to Nate, you know, about a half hour ago. I went out and took pictures to show you what this looks like. And the neighbors, when the first part of this was put in, um, not that long ago, where they moved the sidewalk nearer to the street and made it wider. It's only, it's a, it is wider than the existing sidewalk, but there's nothing wrong with the existing sidewalk. And to spend nearly a, half, a million dollars, well, over a half million dollars, $543,000 to make it wider um, for a quarter of a mile seems like a very high cost for a very low yield. So the other thing, if you can see these pictures after I, quickly present is the sidewalks in quite good condition there. 
and when it when the slight the wider one joins the narrower one not that far from it you hit um, the entrance to Puffton Village and to make the sidewalk higher wider you're going to have to take out a stone wall shrubbery and other things that's an entrance and it says they might have to take be to taking of land you have to take down a utility pole and you're not going to get that much and it's not very long so just so that's reason number one reason number two in this same low income moderate there are sidewalks that are in horrendous dangerous condition so i again gave a picture of just north of all of this the sidewalk leading to the crosswalk where you can go to the north amherst library it is literally chewed up with jagged rocks sticking up. There is no sidewalk in part of it, so you have to jump around it. And people use that small stretch a lot because the crosswalk brings them to library, and then you can get over to the um, shopping plaza. So then on the other side of the street by the church, the sidewalk's in miserable shape. So I gave you pictures. So my final two things, so there, there's need. We're, 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 we're at just past two minutes, but I'll let you finish up your, your two. Okay, things. the last two is I think you may should pay for it if we're going to do it at all. And I saw they might, this might not be enough money. And the third, fourth is there's a whole plan for North Pleasant before the town council, and we haven't had a chance to look at it yet. That includes sidewalks and crosswalks. So my first is this should be a low priority, especially given the cost. Thank you. Okay, thank you. And the pictures are useful. So I'm hoping okay. that you'll be able to see them after I leave you. Okay, thank you. Um, and I guess I would just say, um, not necessarily in response, but just sort of as a reminder to everybody who's on and who may be um, making comments um, that um, this committee can only allocate money to um, grants that we receive to to proposals that we receive um and so obviously um as anybody as you can one can see when if you go to the website um for the proposal we're, that were submitted this year those are the ones that we looked at and um the the one that we selected for the, the multi-use project was actually the only project that was submitted by the town for us to consider um and um so i just note that um, and so for, for everybody else who might be on, that's a, just a, a piece of information to know that we can only consider what's, what's given to us as a proposal. All right. Thanks, Kathy. I'm going to change your role back to attendee, and then um, we'll have someone else come. Thank you, Kathy. All right. Looks like, Lori, you'll be uh, asked to be promoted to panelist. Hi, Lori. You're on mute still. How many times do I have to do this before we get back? Of it? <laughs> anyway, good evening and thank you. Um, and I, um, I'm a little confused because you talked about the proposals that were posted on the website, and I guess I didn't see that. I thought that this was um, a response to proposals that we had submitted. Um, and, you know, we have been um, funded in the past, which we're really grateful for. And I guess I just wanted to give you an update of what it what it looks like to me. So I was just going to share my screen and say that um, your guidelines recommend a balanced approach to funding programs that address housing, food insecurity, economic self-sufficiency. And we really applaud that approach. Um, and the public school demographics, I just want to remind you, continue to show higher than state average percentage of students whose first language is not English. So it's a reliable indicator of the community's diversity, and that's where we come in. So just a reminder that our program is part of building economic self-sufficiency. It's teaching English and digital literacy and civics, career preparation and opportunities for student leadership. We do everything we can to mitigate barriers to participation. So we offer childcare, bus passes. It's all about access. Civics, we bring our leaders into class and then we go visit them in the state house. So we make certain that people appreciate why this democracy matters and how to get involved. We help people get jobs and we hire our own students. All of our tech associates are former students. Um, we offer immigration legal services and many of our students become citizens and vote. Uh, everyone you read about in the news is reflected in our population here. We really thank you for your support. 
you're part of a group of funders and it's money that really makes a big difference to us. So um, thank you for considering us and I'd be happy to answer any questions. Great, thanks, Lori. So um, just to clarify, in case other people have questions as well, we did make decisions at our last meeting, which did include actually funding Center for New Americans. Um, and so um, this is a meeting really where um, the decisions that we made last week were having giving people an opportunity to talk to us about them and, and either thank support you. or we, we... Not, whichever. Um, so thank you for that presentation. And I'm thrilled to be able to tell you. <laughs> um, and um, uh, unless you have any questions, we can move you back to the attendees. I'm happy to be an attendee and thank you very Great. much. Thank you. We're very appreciative. Thank you. Perfect. I'm in. Hi, Lev. You can uh, join as a panelist. It'll, you'll be asked. Hi, Lev. Welcome. Hi. Thank you so much. Um, thank you so much to the committee for your thoughtful deliberations and for recommending the Amherst Survival Center for funding in this year's center, uh, CDBG social service application. I wanted to speak today to just strongly urge the committee in this final step to keep the recommendation at its current level at a minimum and not to reduce it further. I really appreciate um, the $62,000 and change that um, the committee recommended. And I know that that is a lot of money, especially out of this pot. What I hope that the committee really considers is the scale of what we are proposing to offer to Amherst residents. Over the grant period, the Amherst Survival Center Food Pantry will serve more than 3,000 low and moderate income Amherst residents, 3,000. And this recommended cost will cover less than 14% of the cost of that food pantry to serve those Amherst residents. I talk a lot about numbers and I think the last time I came, I showed you a graph. This is kind of how my brain works. Um, but when I'm at the center and actually connecting with people and as you um, are welcome to come and join us at some point for lunch, what I really wanna convey is that behind each and every one of these numbers is a real person, a neighbor of ours, a person who is doing the best they can with what they've got and for whom this service is such a critical piece of the glue that makes it all come together. One of the options that we provide Amherst residents in addition to shopping on site or getting delivery is to get a curbside pickup. Um, so folks that can get to the center, especially but can't wait in line, which are increasingly really long with the numbers that we're serving, curbside's a great option. And afterwards, we send out this automated feedback email. And I just wanted to share with you a recent response that we got. I am a single mom with no family to rely on, working three part-time jobs. We're just priced out of the EBT program and a lot of other assistance, but with apartment, rent, and everything else so expensive, we're, we would often be left with only $30 for the month for groceries after bills are paid. That's if nothing unexpected comes up. Your food pantry has saved us so much stress and so many hungry nights. I could never thank you enough, especially as a mom. When I do have any spare time, I love cooking and I love the challenge of turning disparate foodstuffs into wonderful meals. Last month's generous tomato haul turned into the best homemade marinara sauce I've ever made. And my kid and I made some hand-rolled gnocchi with the batch of potatoes. We ate it while watching an old movie. It was our favorite night of last month and it was thanks to your program. This mom and this kid were two of the 1,700 Amherst residents that we served in the food pantry that month when she wrote that email. And this story was about one of the 42 to 45 meals worth of groceries that her household received just in that one month. The recommended funding levels that you proposed provide $19 per month per Amherst resident served to provide those two weeks full of groceries that they can receive. 
And I really believe this is just about the most cost-effective impact that the MRCDBG committee could design. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. So does anybody have any questions for Liv? Okay. Thank you for coming. We'll move you back to attendee status. And thank you for your work, I should say. Rosanna, you can uh, join as a panelist. Hi, everybody. Hi, everybody. Uh, thank you very much. Um, I am Rosana Salazar, and I am a resident of Amherst and, as a, as, and also a member of the board of directors of the Amherst Mobile Market. And um, yeah, the mobile market began operations in the spring of 2020 at a very painful time for all populations in the world. At that time, uh, layoffs were daily. Families were confined to their homes without the means to buy food. To the mobile market with its four access locations became an incredible option for low-income families. They were able to obtain their free shares by with snaps and hip. They didn't have to take a bus for this. They just had to walk. Now, now we are in 2024. We are a nonprofit organization and we want to continue with this task. We need support to continue not only generating access to food, but also creating connections through the different events we um, program for Amherst residents who live in the different surrounding communities. This coexistence strengthens us as a community. Local organizations also participate in these activities, becoming a space for interactions and learning, and we wanted to continue with that. Uh, probably we have other, other people here. Thank you so much for coming and for speaking. Thank you. Does anybody have any questions for Rosanna? Okay. Hi, Sarah, you'll be asked to join as a panelist. Good evening, everyone. Um, hi, I'm, I'm Sarah Sargent, Program Director with Valley Community Development. And I just, I, I missed last meeting and I saw the recommendations and I wanted to um, get on tonight to just extend my thanks um, to the committee for recommending Valley in providing our small business technical assistance to Amherst business owners. Um, our efforts are going to continue to aim to support the current and future small businesses within the target area to continue driving the local economy and providing jobs for those in need. And we look forward to the opportunity of continuing to support businesses by um, creating marketing plans, business plans, accessing community loan funds, and troubleshooting bumps along the way and celebrating their successes with them that in turn drive the economic prosperity of this community. So again, thank you. Um, and I look forward to the work that we'll do as a partnership. And if you have any questions, please let me know. Thanks, Sarah. Does anybody have any questions? Okay, thank you for your work. And we'll move you back to the attendees. Sounds great. Thanks for coming tonight. Hi, Susan. You're you're uh, you'll be asked to become a panelist. Oh, I think I, I think Maybe, I, I think moved. You that. got rid of <laughs> the names. Move around sometimes on my uh, on my on my toolbar. <laughs> Hold on a minute. Matt just became an attendee by accident. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> give us a moment, Susan. Sorry. <laughs> oh, sure. <laughs> It is. I, I I'm on a different computer. I've never had this happen where the 
<laughs> the names <laughs> move up and down yeah. in the list. It's, um, we lost Nat. Yeah, we're bringing him back. Oh, good. <laughs> yeah, sorry, sorry, Nat. It's all part of the upgrade. It sounds like. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, extra excitement on your screen there. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Welcome back. I thought Sarah kicked me off that she was going to take my place, but uh, I guess I'm <laughs> reinstated now. <laughs> all right, Susan, thanks for coming. Yes, well, thank you all so much. It's great to have the opportunity to speak with you all. And you know, we're just so thrilled to see the decision to um, the recommendation for $33,348 to support Big Brothers, Big Sisters of Hampshire County. And, you know, we just can't thank the committee enough for valuing our work. And, you know, every day we see the value of our work with the increased numbers of kids, uh, particularly in Amherst, which is our, you know, the greatest amount of kids we serve are based in Amherst. Most of them are from single parent families. Most of them are BIPOC. Um, most of them have, you know, a variety of challenges that they face every day in their lives and being able to provide um, an additional relationship that's supportive, that's fun, and that we know increases their chances of successful futures is something that, you know, we're glad that you all can see the value of, and we're just very proud to continue our work and in advancing opportunities for Amherst children. Uh, we're actually just recently reviewing um, this, the results of some of our, like our three-year survey results, and, you know, it's just seeing some really promising outcomes with looking at, um, there was over a 16% increase in academic performance with the kids that we're serving and a 24% increase in um, in mental health. And we know that mental health is such a priority here, especially here in our region. So we're looking forward to continuing the work that we're doing to, um, to benefit Amherst kids through mentoring relationships. So thank you all so much for everything that you do. And we truly could not do this without your support. We really count on, um, you count on these funds to make our work possible. So thank you all so much. Thank you. Thank you for your work. Does anybody have any questions or comments for Susan? All right. Well, thank you for coming. We'll promote you back to attendee or sounds good. Thanks so much. Thank Take care. Bye. Hi, Francine. You'll be asked to be become a panelist. Hi, Francine. Oh, you're on mute. Again, why? But <laughs> <laughs> we will all never learn. <laughs> we'll never learn, right? Well, anyway, good evening, everybody. Uh, my name is Francine Rodriguez, and I am the program manager at Family Outreach with Amherst. And um, we applied for CDBG funding for our housing support program. And I want to thank the committee for um, recommending our program. Um, our housing program is really imperative for Amherst residents. Um, our main focus now is on housing retention, um, because if you lose an apartment in Amherst, it's the likelihood of you being able to obtain another apartment and stay in Amherst is really unlikely. Um, we recently worked with a family who unfortunately had been evicted and uh, we worked with them to get them into emergency shelter. And that process was daunting. And the amount of verifications that they were asked to provide, um, it was daily for a good month. Um, the family said to me, if it wasn't for our support and our help, they would have given up. They would not been able to complete this process. And also, they were put, after they were actually approved, they were put on a wait list um, for a month. And with collab, you know, our community really supports our residents. So our agency, along with some other agencies, collaborated and paid for this family to stay in a hotel until they were placed. Um, if we hadn't done that, they would have been sleeping in their car in the middle of January with two children. And I understand the state has a crisis as well, but that's what becoming homeless today would mean for families. 
Um, another issue we see frequently and a lot more is um, we're working with some families that are already in shelter locally in Amherst. Um, and since they've already been evicted and been in housing court, no landlord will rent to them. Um, and it's really unfortunate. And we've spread the, you know, our, our horizons from Springfield to, I mean, even to, you know, Franklin County, and nobody will rent to them. Um, one young lady has been in shelter for five years because nobody, no landlord would take a shot on her, even though she has a Section 8 voucher that they're guaranteed to get their money. You know, I get it, but they just will not budge on that policy. And it's, it's really hard. Um, so our program is absolutely essential um, and imperative for Amherst residents to have access to. Um, so I, I really wanna thank the committee for recommending our program. Um, and also just to have the access for, for Amherst folks, because um, we also administer the resident aid program and that influx is at least every week somebody's calling to get assistance for rental arrears. Um, so again, just thank you for understanding the, the need and um, we appreciate your recommendation. Thank you, thank Francine, you. and thank you for your work. Does anybody have comments or questions for Francine? Okay, great. Well, thank you so much for coming tonight and speaking and, and for all of the work that you do. Thank you. Good night. Good night. Hi, Emily. You'll be asked to be promoted to panelist. Hi. Uh, hi. So I'm a part of the Amherst mobile market, and I just wanted to come and talk about it, that um, we recently became a nonprofit. I've been involved with the Amherst mobile market for a few years now. I first started as um, not just working on the farm, but actually driving the van and like bringing vegetables to this market that pops up in low-income parts of Amherst. And I've had just the most incredible experience of like handing people in need vegetables and fresh produce like to their door or you know just at the market itself and uh, I've really seen it be a transformative part of the Amherst community. I've loved working with Rosanna and everyone else who um, has just put in so much effort into creating this nonprofit and um the, the funding that you provide is completely, it, we rely on it. Um, this first year as a nonprofit is going to be extremely difficult and hiring and everything and figuring out logistics. So yeah, it's just, um, just here to show support. Thank you. And thank you for your work. Thank you. Yes. Bye. All right, Isabel, you'll be asked to be promoted. Uh, let's... Can you hear me? Yes. I am sorry, my camera is not working. No, that's okay. Good evening, my name is Isabel Ramirez. I have living in Amherst with my husband who is a PhD student at UMass and my children. I would like to talk about um, the Amherst Mobile Market. Uh, the Amherst Mobile Market has been one of the main support for my family since the pandemic situation. I can still remember the enormous worry I felt when I was left without enough income. I'm sorry. Since my family is low income and the Amherst Mobile Market has been a great support to be able to offer my family high quality vegetables, fruits, that are organic and fresh and easily accessible. And the best thing, they are local products. And also I think about other families who like my family have the big challenge every day, eating healthy and do not have enough money. Uh, I am very grateful for the Amherst Mobile Market and it would be very fantastic if uh, you continue to support the Amherst Mobile Market. Thank you. Thank you, Isabel. Thank you so much for coming tonight.
So it looks like nobody else has their hands raised. So I'll just do one last call that um, if everybody who has who wants to speak has spoken, we're going to um, close out the public hearing and move into a public meeting. I'll just give a couple seconds to make sure no hands get raised. Yeah, while, while it's quiet, I was gonna say that um, the literacy project said that they were hoping to speak and just, um, you don't want to talk about that program, but I, I'm not sure I see anyone here. Um, I just wanted to let you know the committee know. Okay. Well, um, if um, if anybody does come, we do have, um, I think, an opportunity for at the end of the meeting um, mm -hmm. to take another comment mm -hmm. if they get here. Um, okay, so um, why don't we move into the public meeting? Do I need to, I'm sorry, I should know this. Do we need to close out with a vote? Yeah, I think we could have a, a motion okay. and, and roll call okay. for that. Okay, would anybody like to move that we close out the public hearing and move into public meeting? Good, I see Nat is making a motion. I moved. I'll second it. All right, with Rika seconding, all in favor say aye. We'll have to decide, we have to do a roll call. Oh, okay. Suzanne? Aye. Rika? Aye. Nat? Yes. And I say aye as well. So we will unanimously move into a public meeting. There. Great. Um, so first, um, if there are any, do anybody have any announcements? Um, I was, was going to make the announcement. I think, I think, uh, members may know, but Greg, a member had uh, has resigned for personal reasons mm -hmm. from the committee. So, um, you know, that was effective today. So he's not. Yeah. So we um, thank Greg for all of his service in the past. And that does mean that we do have an open seat. So at some point we'll be looking to fill, I think actually two seats possibly. So, yes, if, yeah. um, so those will be, those announcements should be um, out at some point and, and we welcome um, interested people to come into the committee and, and help out with this really important and difficult work. Um, so beyond that, then um, our next agenda item is to, I think, take a look at the decisions that we made last time around and, um, and think about whether there were any comments tonight that would um, lead us to want to alter those in any way. Um, Yeah, and I, I'll I'll share my screen. Okay. Um, uh, let's see. I think I'll I th maybe before we do that, I was going to mention that we um, at the last meeting uh, there was a discussion to revise the Amherst Center target area. It's somewhat difficult now, but to come up um, East Pleasant to Pine Street and down North Pleasant to include this section of North Pleasant Street, and so. Um, you know, as opposed to trying to create another target area, typically the state would want to see two or three in a community. So we've kept, you know, Pomeroy Village, East Amherst, and then the town center. Um, so that's one revision. Uh, and the other that I was going to um, make is um, the, in the strategy, the, we, you know, we redefine the town center area to include that change. And then the state had asked, I sent them a draft of this strategy after the last meeting, and they wanted to see kind of more specific timeframes for the goals. And so, you know, a lot of these we had as just ongoing. And so really, you know, for housing and land use now, it's like a one year with annual support uh, and a five year for building. Um, and so, you know, I, these timeframes were changed to be, it's, this is meant to be a, a one to five year plan. And so, uh, some of these time frames were just were um, spelled out as to you know two or three years or a year. So those are the changes um, recommended by the state to have that in there. Um, and just to clarify for for all of us, I think Nate and for anybody who's listening, some of these are impacted by grants that we have given out in the past, some that we're giving out this year, and some have nothing to do with the work that we're doing currently at all. Right. Right. The, correct. Right. Yeah. This this particular plan is not. A CDBG plan, right? It's a, it's meant to be a synthesis of plans, and you know, it's it's only three pages, and it's something that we provide to the state so that they can, you know, see what the community is is looking at. Um, and so we've structured it along the master plan in terms of its content, and then you know, these are we have um, 
eight kind of priority rankings here. And so, yeah, so they wanted to see a little bit more specific timeframes uh, for these. Uh, and then I guess we can get to the recommend recommendations. And so if we start with the non-social services, here's the, you know, what was recommended, um, you know, Valley CDC in the town. And then for the social services, uh, the Survival Center, Family Outreach, Big Brothers, Big Sisters, Center for New Americans, um, Amherst Mobile Market, and the Literacy Project wasn't recommended. And so, you know, five social services, which is the maximum number and the dollar amount uh, as well. And then, you know, the two non-social service activities. And again, I'm just going to sort of say things that I think we we know, but just to make sure that everybody who's listening um, has in their mind as they're reviewing this with us, um, the um, we were able to provide um, budgeting or or uh, the, to meet the proposals for both of the non-social service organizations. Those are the only two proposals that we received, and so we um, were able to give essentially all the money they were asking for in those. Um, and then for the social service proposals, we're limited in that we can only choose five um, to give to. We don't have to choose five, but we can't choose any more than five. Um, and so this year with six proposals coming in, the literacy project was the only one that we ended up not funding after quite a bit of discussion. Um, so does anybody have any um, thoughts about those decisions that we made and specifically in reference to any of the comments that were made tonight during the public hearing that would either either reinforce your your um, commitment to the decisions that we made already or are leading you to think about um, making a recommended change? I, I would say, yeah, I feel very good about, uh, based on the feedback tonight and our deliberations, I feel very good about the recommendations we made and would want us to stay with what we developed last time. I, I would agree. I'm comfortable with um, the process we went through last time and, and comfortable with the result. So I think um, I'm, I'm fine leaving it the way it is. Yeah, I mean, I think based on the applications that we received um, and the available funding that we had, that was the the fairest, and it's was really difficult. Um, but I feel like we were able to help a good chunk of what the request was for each of the social service agencies. Well, I agree as well, um, and um, I think with that, then we can take a vote to make those our official recommendations. Is that right, Nate? Yeah, and I think as part of that, maybe it could be the same motion or a separate one just to confirm the target area change and the changes to the strategy. Okay. And that way I can you know, say that that's final. Okay, so um, essentially then all of the decisions that we made in the last meeting is what we're going to be um, voting on in one fell swoop tonight. Um, so is, would anybody like to make a motion? Sure. I'll um, um, move that we um, finalize that we approve the um, uh, the strategy and the um, new map, as well as the funding recommendations. Is there a second? Second. Sure. Okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay, we'll put Rika down as the second, and um, we'll now do a roll call. Um, Suzanne? Yes. Rika. Yes. Nat. Yes, for me. And I'm a yes as well. So that's unanimous. Great. Yeah. Thanks, everyone. So, I was, yeah, the application's due in about three weeks. So, I'll be pretty busy. Um, I'll work with the town manager um, just to discuss these again. Uh, I don't know. You know, I'm not, I don't, I don't know if I see, foresee anything. Um, yeah. And I, I, I thank everyone for their work and for everyone who submitted proposals. I know this is, you know, it's a it's an important process and it you know the committee takes it really seriously so i'm glad everyone was able to, to be a part of it um you know at one point we thought we might not have a round this year but I, I really think the state will probably do a round every year um you know we had a two-year grant last year and i think this round came as a surprise but i'm anticipating that next year it'll be you know a fall um application process and kind of follow the same timelines for anyone who's listening and then we can you know we'll, we try to make the community aware as soon as we know so you know, I'm not anticipating a year off. It, I think it'll just be every year now, um, just so. Um, 
And um, I guess um, for um, topics not reasonably anticipated within 48 hours, um, I do have a question actually, um, and Nate, I don't know if you can answer it now or if something that we'll look into, but in terms of bringing on new board members or new committee members, um, the since we have, a, it's, it's two openings, is that correct? It is now, yeah. 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 Um, and so is there um, an outreach plan that the town has? I know that there are other committees that probably also have openings, and I think they get posted on the website. Um, but it would be, um, I think, valuable for us to try to get those two positions filled before we begin the next round. Um, and I, I also, Nat, your term is not up, is it? I was just looking, yeah. So I think Rika and Suzanne, yours ends this June. I know the town manager's office was going to start reaching out to individuals just because, um, I don't know, I, I guess I, I, you know, some other boards and committees I work with, there's a number of um, members that are also cycling off. And so I think, um, I'll, I, Becky, you and I, we can talk, but I think we should, you know, write to the, the town manager's office as a reminder and just, um, they were going to try to advertise committee openings next month in March. Okay. And try to get try to get those going. Okay. Um, so I think we could try to at least mention that the block grant committee now has two vacancies and you know some okay. terms ending as well. Okay. And if people want to stay on, even if their terms are ending, do they need to reapply or they just let the town manager know? I think they can let the town manager's office know. Okay. And I think I think yeah, I think that is it's pretty informal. Okay. And so that's something that Suzanne and Rico would need to affirmatively do if they would. yes yeah typically they would the town manager's office would reach out and i like I, I think that might happen in the next you know four to five weeks but if you're you know if you want to to reach out that okay you can do that too i'm looking Not forward to your you. continued Just... yes i'm looking forward to your continued participation <laughs> <laughs> yeah it would be nice to have um right have some vacancies filled because if if we follow the normal process typically we start kind of the outreach in september you know, this this year was a little abbreviated and so it'd be nice to have you know people available and then we can um you know just have have everyone around for that that entire process as opposed yeah. to getting someone in october and we've been meeting for a little bit yeah and i guess you know what i would i think it, it wouldn't be a conflict i don't think it should be a conflict that if any of the organizations that um are you know are on right now listening, if you have newsletters and want to put in your newsletters that there are vacancies, um, you know, any outreach to to as many communities as we can, I think is is um, is really beneficial. I'm sure it's not a conflict actually. No, um, right. So um, does anybody else have any other items that were not reasonably anticipated within the last 48 hours? Okay, then I think we do have um, a final opportunity for public comment, although I did go out of order. If there's anybody who had anything come up that they want to address who's in an attendee right now, um, this would be your opportunity to raise your hand. And otherwise, we will um, call the meeting to close. All right, I don't see any hands. So, um, Good night. Yeah. Do we need? Do we? Do we, we need, need to, to move close? to close? Yeah. I guess if you want to. Okay. <laughs> we can continue meeting if you'd like. <laughs> All right. I move to adjourn. Moving to adjourn. Any seconds? I'll go for it. We'll give it to Suzanne this time. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, Rika, are you in favor? I'm in favor. All right, Suzanne, and not in favor. Yeah. Yes. I'm in favor. I'm sure Nate is in favor. Um, all right. Thank you all for your work. And um, we will be in touch, I guess, by email about our next meeting. Yeah. Right. Because nothing is scheduled. This was the final scheduled right. meeting. Yeah, so actually, right. let's unadjourn for just a moment. Um, yeah. We're still in the discussion phase. Yeah. I think that okay. um, um, usually in April, May, we have a public hearing to review the current activities that are ongoing. So we'll probably have that. So March might be quiet unless we need a meeting for any, any you know, any reason. Um, I don't, I don't have one right now, but you know, if there's a needs, you know, if there needs to be a budget amendment or something mm -hmm. with this application round changes that we don't, you know, foresee, then maybe we'd have a meeting, but right now it seems like April or May. 
So could we add to the agenda, Nate, um, just a discussion about whether we want to think about redoing the survey that we did last year? Yeah. Um, and just, just talk about that survey. Yeah. Yeah, I know. I think that was useful, right? There was uh, over 100 responses or 150. Mm -hmm. And then it's something that we could look at for next okay. next round. Yep. Great. Great. All right. Now we'll actually adjourn. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Good night, Thanks, everyone. Have a good night. Good night. Good night. Bye.